All right, I'm back. I posted the first one. Um, I apologize for the the internet's acting up. Um, hopefully, what I was seeing was what was posted. But if not, um, it's okay. This is we're going into part two of this conversation. I think this is a conversation that we're probably gonna have to keep having too. To be honest, because there's so many layers to it. There's so much. There's so much to talk about. There's so much to talk about. So much to unpack. So we're gonna keep getting into it. All right. Let's go, Julissa. Julissa! <laughs> Waiting on you. Yes. Here I am. Yes. So much to talk about and sing about and like, you know, express ourselves in several ways. No, for real. I really think that this is such an awesome moment. In yeah, time. I've been writing like crazy. Yeah, I just started like I, I I'm like halfway through a spoken word that, that I started writing and I'm like, damn, like, you know, like the words are coming because the, the spirit is there. working. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a moment in time where we're gonna see a lot of art. I mean, I think one thing, like in a weird way, like when we're trying to stand in gratitude in the middle of all this chaos, um, I think something to be grateful for is the way in which people have found their voices and are and are and are just expressing them in so many multitudes of ways and touching so many different audiences that it just it warms my heart like you know what I mean to know that everybody has a voice of someone who's willing to speak and like conversations like these right like I'm a I'm a voice and I'm like you know a Bronx Latina but like you know Miami right like Miami can hear me and the Bronx needs to hear you right and like just like the ways in which we're finding these intersections and what I was um gonna say before we went off the live is that another huge intersection that I want to shout out that I think our communities need to sort of do the work for to show up for is the LGBTQ AI plus community. Oh my god. Um, we need again. to yeah we need to start showing up for them in a way that we haven't been um, and I know that that's a tough one right because that really taps on people's beliefs in a very specific way and I get it. I get it. I really, I understand. I grew up in a Christian household and I've heard all the reasons and all the stories as to why I know, but guys, it's an old mentality and we need to understand where our scriptures have been co-opted from because it is not that scripture and believing yes. things Colossus are not scripture. worthy. Like Jesus is not our savior. Yeah, like, you know, I, I'm not anti, I'm not anti-religion or belief in any sort of way, but it's about understanding how the stories were passed down. We've all played the phone, the telephone game. We know how that happens and, it, and, and what we need to understand that in some cases it was intentional the ways that the words were distorted. Uh, our connection to spirit is ours and it lives within us and it has nothing to do with the construct but there's nothing wrong with follow following a system that feels right for you and how how you want to you know mm -hmm. have that relationship essentially yeah. um you know what i mean and we need to dismantle that because if that's at the core of why we think it's okay that people like ayana dior who got beat up by 30 men in a store um <laughs> or tony mcdade who's who got killed right around the same time as george floyd and no one is saying his name you know what I mean he's our trans brother we need to be there to to support each other and, and and that work is important and like you know listen as a cis woman it is important for me to show up because I have brothers and sisters in my community who need me to show up who show up for me Amen. who show up for me and so like Constantly. that is so important and it's pride month guys like yes. don't get it twisted don't get it twisted to say we can't celebrate pride we celebrate pride because stonewall was a riot led by Marcia a black Johnson, trans was woman a black, a black, black trans woman Marcia you know Johnson, what i mean like we started that that is our history we are that yo we are that fly bro we're at the forefront of so many movements we as black people are that fly. That image that we see of like the black power fist at the Olympics, that's a Cubano man. That's an Afro-Cubano man. And it's an image that we only circulate in the black community. That is a Cubano man. You understand? Like it is important that we understand the associations and the intersections, but it has to also include the LGBTQAI plus community. It cannot just be, oh, you know, Afro Latinos are also Latinos. It goes past that. It is time. We are in a revolution. No more of the bullshit. It is time to cut the shit. It is time to call people out. And let me tell you something. I always say pay attention to the corporations because this is a capitalist society. When you see corporations scattering like fucking roaches because they are scared to lose your dollar, understand your power. 
understand, understand your power it. in that movement. You have to understand your power. And we have to. We have to shift the ways in which we, we circulate our energy. Going back to what you were saying, there's not giving us a lot of input, but we sure as hell give them a lot of output. Output <laughs> is for a dollar. Oh it's for a dollar, sweetie. Like, where do you invest it? You're mad they burned down the Target. Oh, you're bad. You're mad about that, but you're not supporting the small business in your in your community. But then you're also mad they looted it. But you're not about to go shop there once Target's open again, are you? You have to understand, you yes. know, what I mean? like the ways in which you have to show up. The like, power, the power that we have as a community. I, I mean, I wholeheartedly agree with you on the message of right in all of these conversations, the intersection of, you know. LGBTQIA plus communities visibility is is pertinent because there is no liberation without everyone's liberation. That is just yes. a fact of life. You can't like, and this is again, like one of the many ways that I was schooled about like the reform, like trying to go with the reform angle of things is like, you can't take baby steps towards people's freedom. You can't take baby steps towards understanding that we are all worth at the very least, okay, we are worth understanding that each one right. of us life is worthy. You right. know, we all are meant to be alive simply because we are alive. We are yeah. taking up the space we are and breathing. There's no extra explanation for it. Like that's right. why we deserve it. It's because we're here and we're alive. Like, and they're so lucky that we are just looking for equal rights and that we're not looking for revenge. I'm Let me so make that very clear. Oh, what is her last name? I think Johnson. I don't want to. I don't want to misspeak. But I saw, I saw this beautiful black woman who who was really proclaiming like she she spoke for like six minutes about this exact thing. She's like, "You're lucky that like we're looking for equality and that we're not looking for revenge." And that yeah. is the truth beyond truth. And I think that that at the end of the day is the at the real core as to why white people are refusing to look at this moment, mm -hmm. are the ones that are refusing to look at this moment and not grow. It's not because you don't see it. Mm -hmm. It's not because you think it doesn't exist. It's because you're scared as fucking hell that you're going to be put in the position that black people have been in for the past 400 years. Yep. That's the, at the root of all of these issues is the envy. At the root of all of these issues is the, the fear of shit. Am I going to get treated the way that I've, am I going to get what I've been dishing out? Right. Am I going to have to reap what I sow? That's the real issue. And that is what people need to be sitting with right now in that uncomfortability comfortability that we all, we're all experiencing. When yeah. we get confronted with these things, we really need to be looking deep, 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 deep down inside. It's like, why am I feeling uncomfortable? Is it because yes. what they're telling me isn't true? Is it yes. because what they're telling me is too much or in a weird tone or too aggressive or whatever? Like, no, bitch, like, that's not right. the problem. Like, <laughs> it's not the tone. It's not the way it's being told to you. It's not the fact that you have to look it up on your own and that black people cannot be doing this extra fucking emotional labor work for you. Hello. And having to explain things to you. There are resources upon resources upon resources out there for us to, to, to look at and to read. Yeah. We have to take the initiative if we truly mean to be taking initiative. We have to make the move to be better for ourselves and have these uncomfortable conversations with our family members and right. have these uncomfortable conversations with our neighbors and our sisters and our cousins and whoever the hell else has the audacity to still not believe in the in the in human life. Yep. You know what I mean? Like we're we're, we're above that. Yeah. And it sucks because I feel like a lot of a lot of black people are being put in a position where they have to be nice about whether or not they, or whether or not they're going to educate somebody about right. what they've been fucking screaming at the top of their lungs for I don't even know how long it's forever. Been. You know what I mean? It's not their responsibility. And we have to just come to terms with that. And we cannot police the way that they tell us that. Like, like we need to take the policia out of our own minds and heads yep. and hearts. Like that little white supremacist that lives in each of our, our hearts that shames us when we, when we haven't done enough or shames right. us when we're not productive enough or shames us because we were wrong. Like, we really need to get over that little bitch. And we really need to get acquainted with our higher selves. And yep. the, the people that we're meant to become because they don't have time for the petty, like so, self sorry bullshit right now. Right. You have to take yourself out of the equation and you really have to look at how have I been complicit in these systems? How, right. am, what am I doing from my corner of the earth, from my body 
to make this world a more progressive place and to make this place safer for my black brothers and sisters right. across the board and folks, non-binary right. folks as well. Right. In, and our trans brothers and sisters. Like everyone is included in the conversation because we're all human beings. Right. So we're all little it's, humans. It's really that. And, and it's, we, we got to keep, we got to keep finding that language. I'm going to say it again. We have to keep finding the language to have these conversations. And you're absolutely right about how people are, there's there's a lot of performative um, activism right now. Oh my God. There's a lot of people, like, I, I love my friends, but I have a lot of my white friends who feel the need to reach out to me to, one, make sure I'm good, which I'm okay with that. Thank you for checking in on me. But number two, then list all the things that they've done. Almost like, and then here's here's what, here's here's my list. So so I'm, I'm not on the naughty list, right? Because I signed this petition and I told it's it that here. It's, it's that, that interesting guilt that it's like, am I doing enough? <laughs> like, am I approved of, of is this enough? for me to prove that I love you right you know and it, the, the the proof comes in the consistent showing up exactly and this is a consistent battle this is not one that stops because I you know I have been having these conversations and, and in conversation with a lot of grassroots organizers for years you know what I mean like they've been doing this work people have been doing this work this yes. work has been written they've been doing the 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 seminars and the lectures and all of that that is in existence and it's yeah. tangible things that you could like rachel cargill is amazing she does mm -hmm. a lot of work with healing you know yeah. our bullshit <laughs> instead of you know and of course her focus is her own community but she does a lot of work with with you know white people who really want to be allies in this situation yep. and i think the main thing about allyship is understanding that it's not performative it's not just you posting one black square exactly. Exactly. because i have a lot of people in my life who i called out for posting a, a, a black square only, you know? Right. And a lot of people got really upset about that because they're like, I'm trying, I'm doing what I can. And it's like, no, you're not. Right, right. Just you're not. And I, don't, and I don't mean to be rude about it. I don't mean to make you feel sad and, and then you feel discouraged and not even want to try. Yeah. This is a point where we need to stop being toddlers. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are, are toddlers right now. We are walking through this new world of, of wool, wool past our eyes like, whoa, like, Wow, right. this is really fucked up for people of color, man. Like, wow, this is really fucked up. Yeah. And of course, there's an interested guilt that comes with that. You know what I mean? Of course, right. you're going to feel bad about that. Of course, you're going to feel right. probably really heightenedly bad about your own role in that. And how right. many times you've, you're coming to the realization you've been a part of the problem. Right. But all of that guilt is needs to be transmuted into action. That's the main thing right now that I think everyone's asking for across the board is like, if you really want to be better and you want to show up better it's like i'm not gonna like pardon your past and like it's okay that you're right. racist because it's never gonna be okay but it is something that we were indoctrinated with and so you can do the work to be better and you can't get lost in the self-pity you really need to get a grip on how on your strength on your courage, on your bravery to, to right. be on the right side of history for once, you know, right. and to heal the intergenerational trauma of your ancestors and whatever your answers might have possibly done to black people over right. the course of our history or, or, or to their black relatives or to their black, you know, community members. There, right. like, there's a lot of pain that has been done. And, and of course, it's not stuff that can be undone, but it's stuff that can be worked on to heal, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think one, like, one other point that I want to drive home is um, we have to change the narrative about thinking that, oh, well, there's all the black people who don't care themselves. And they decide to, you know, like, sit Be down lazy. And for government checks to come in. And blah, 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 even though the people, the highest number of people on welfare are white, by the way, if, if y'all didn't know that fact. But say, but like, can you repeat that stat for the people, please? Yeah, the majority of the people in the United States who receive welfare and benefits from the government are white people because we forget that we have a whole rural white America. We have, the, you know, a lot of these folks and a lot of them are, yes, the within the Trump supporting community. Um, and they're having a completely different experience that we are like in our own poverty and like experiencing that are so disconnected from that. That's another unlearning. I mean, I'm not even going to go there. That's but a whole like, nother lesson. Know <laughs> that that is its own fucking clusterfuck. And guess what, white people? Instead of trying to rush here and trying to look good for me, go work on those people. Because the same way you want to point out uh, our crack epidemics or our gang problems, and our, the mess. same way you want to point that out, let me we gotta talk about men. Go look at your own motherfucking people. You have issues that you need to focus on too. And by the way, a lot of the shit I have to deal with is because y'all motherfuckers, 
you know, wouldn't leave us alone or like Reverend Sharpton said, because you had your knee on our neck, right? And so like, that is why we have extra shit to work on. So please go work in your corner. Let me work in my corner. Stop trying to get a little stamp of approval so that you can say, well, that one black girl in my life said what I'm doing is enough. Fuck the one black person or two black people in your life. We're talking about an entire community, an entire movement. And if that one black person also doesn't understand the, the depth of their movement, then it's not their job to cover all those bases for you. You need to meet all the black people at all of the intersections to do the work. It is your job. And it has been in your face. And I feel like a lot of people, the hard part is going to be looking back at their lives and thinking about all the moments where they saw that shit and they turned away. And listen, not every black person is going to be there to call you out, but it's your job to sit with the truth of what you know about how you've behaved or have not behaved. Because guess what? George Floyd's death is not any more or less horrendous than all of the deaths that have happened in, in 2020 alone, in 2019 alone. I mean, you want to go back? You want to go back to 1619? It is not the worst the only reason that it is that we are this passionate is because we are in a moment in time where we have the power to make enough enough. And if we slow the fuck down and if we stay tied to our fears, because at the end of the day, I have a spiritual advisor. She always says fear is false evidence appear appearing as real, right? False evidence as appearing real. Her name is Readings by Viva. <laughs> incredible woman right but that is so true it is false evidence appearing real and so we have to we have to understand what is the truth what is the truth and if you're afraid of the truth then understand that and own where you're staying stagnant because i'm fine with people who are like you can talk me to death julissa i don't give a fuck my life is my life and i believe what i believe that's fine understand you are making a choice to be stagnant and i won't even call it right or wrong but the consequences will be what they are period and you have to deal with that so ownership you better speak to them ownership you know i'm tired girl i'm tired of this i've been to literally my first job i I started work i've not been unemployed since the age of 14. my first job was at my local council person's office because i was like oh that's an opportunity we need to fix where we're at we've always needed to fix where we're at we didn't need police to be killing us to know that we needed to fix where we've been at amen this is bigger than George Floyd. Stop hopping off the activism train because you think it's not your community. It is this country's revolution right now because the United States is a black country because black people built it. Okay? So this is our history. It's not just black history. We're living in American history. Right yeah, now. honestly, when, when people complain about like the property being destroyed, I laugh. I really it's do. Laughable. I laugh. Because I'm like, how, that's not even like... First of all, we're on native territory. Right. You have literally put natives onto reservations yep. and told them that that's the only space that they're allowed to have, even though this whole entire space was theirs. And we yep. violate their treaties to this day. And yep. you want to talk about property? Yeah. Do you want to talk about what's owned and what is not owned? Or yep. what is earned and what is not earned? Or yep. what is deserved and what is not deserved? Okay. We can get into those conversations, but they're, they're, they're pretty deep. I don't think yeah. a lot of people want to hear the truth. <laughs> yeah, girl. Girl, let me tell you, they'll knock us off of Instagram so fast. <laughs> so, fast. so fast, these settler colonizers. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's not to, I'm sorry I got passionate. I'm not yelling like child. That's love. Do that's not love. apologize. That's give harsh love. Thing. Don't apologize <laughs> for your passion, me. mama. Like, that's another thing. Like, be as passionate as you are. Use your full capacity of your voice. That's what I was given to you, for sure. Yeah. Girl, you deserve to be, first of all, enraged, if that's how you feel. Be fucking oh. enraged. You feel passionate, you feel free, okay. you feel whatever you feel, feel all of the feels, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's and another I'm thing like... you need to stop policing black women especially about how the fuck they express themselves or their yeah. or what they've been through. Like yeah. that is not our place to, yeah. to, to say anything about whether or not we like the like the pal palpability of their words. Like yeah. that is not our place. We yeah. we need to just listen actually. And granted, if you feel like you're being talked at you, if you feel like you're being talked to, you need to sit with why you feel that way. Right. That's probably, that, that anger that you're feeling towards you is not anger towards you. It's anger towards a, a very, uh, it's a blanket statement at this point. Yeah. So if it, if it pertains to you and it affects you to where you feel called out by the energy at which this person is speaking, then you gotta, you've got work to do. It always goes back to us. It, everything goes back. We are just spirits having a human experience at the end of the day. We are just spirits having a human experience. And our mm -hmm. spirits have lived and lived several yeah. lives. 
and all that wisdom and every time your intuition speaks at you it's not just the moment of now it's the history of back then when and that spirit saying we did this already we did this yeah, already this. We speak up stop repeating speak this up. shit and and when you ignore it it never feels good let me tell you something all the people in our community who are like feeling too afraid to move that shit doesn't feel good but you know what the system knows that and the system is so glad to have the people who step out of line and have all that stuff because it it create it makes it difficult for us to build up from where we're at but like it's really it's all you're all you got guys you got to really step into yourself and demand the truth of of the spaces you occupy demand them to respect the way in which you guys enter these spaces we can no longer conform to something that was never meant to serve us there is 1% of our population that has all the wealth 1% of our population has all of the wealth and we are the ones who cry, fight and kill each other trying to get money that is never coming down and trying to get resources. we're not holding it. It's not between us. I, I'm fighting you. You're, I'm, you're not the one holding my bag. They're holding my bag. And if I'm upset and I feel defensive because the world I'm trying to protect is one that I built with my blood, sweat and tears right and i don't want you to destroy that i have to understand that when you destroy that there's a reason and a circumstance that put you in the position to have to do that because why would you otherwise nobody just does it for fun that's a false narrative no one misbehaves and and commits looting and crimes just for fun it is out of necessity Ooh, and they feel like people. it's necessary except white people i'm sorry because i have seen a lot of white people cause a lot of destruction for, because right. they fucking feel because, like and you know what and even because that has their a reason they don't them they too. don't know how to articulate themselves because even that has a reason because the only reason they know how to loot and break windows and do that shit is because they don't know how to have a strong voice and so what they do is break shit it is still an expression it is wrong and i don't agree with it but it, even that is an expression right and why is that the expression of those people because even though they're fucking white they have been put down the thumb of people who have not given them the articulation and the resources to really express themselves we're That's all a huge fucking thing here yeah i think even just like when we talk about like the patriarchy because that's the, the core root of all of this too because you know women are Girl. second class citizens to men before all of the race issues come into play right if we're just doing and that's it, that's if they re like if you're femme passing as well because like i want to even talk about like the census for example Oof. i was filling out the census and i just want to talk about how terrible it is like just it's the shitty way right it's it's disgusting it's first of all super heteronormative you could only pick between two sexes oh. they only have male or female you can't even click other to fill in whatever they just don't have it so that's the first issue i had with it second issue i had was the next question was about my hispanic origin yes okay <laughs> yeah. whether i was hispanic latino or spaniard were the, was the question yeah. the options were no i am not hispanic latino or spaniard right that was the first question the second question was yes i am mexican mexican american or chicano those were the three options of that right. option the third option was yes i'm puerto rican the fourth was yes i'm cuban and then the last option Okay, I'm gonna say this. The last option was yes, I am of Hispanic, Latino, Spanish descent. Um, and then you had to fill in other. And the examples were like Dominican, Panamanian, mm -hmm. um, for uh, just the, all of the other, all of the others, quote unquote, right? So I was like, my Hispanic origin. I was like. <laughs> I mean, I'm Cuban, like, yeah. I'm for sure I'm Cuban, but I was born in Miami. I don't even have that option. I don't have Cuban American, right. it's not an option. There's Mexican American is an option, but Cuban American is not, or Puerto Rican right. American is not. Dominican isn't even on there. <laughs> that shit is fucking wild to me. Like, I had to click both. I had to click, yes, I'm Cuban, and yes, I am Cuban, and I had to write in Cuban American, because I didn't even know what the fuck to pick. I didn't know what right. was real. And then, here's the kicker. The next part that comes up is, what is my race? After yes. asking me my Hispanic <laughs> origin, they asked me, what is my race? Yeah. And there's no Hispanic option. There's no Latino option. Yeah. There is white, which is, in, when it's described, it says Irish, English, um, Swiss, whatever, like European, white. And then they have Egyptian in there, which I was like, uh, Egyptian, North Africa, you fucking weirdos. Like, what do you, how is Egyptian white? And yes, yeah. of course, there's some white Arabs, but like, or Egyptians, excuse me, that's not the same thing. But I was literally like, what, what is the, what, 
what? It makes no, make it make sense. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Make and so it was, sense. that was the white option was one. And then black is another option. And then they have Pacific Islander. They have, you know, Chinese. They have J Japanese. They have quite a few breakdowns of, of dif different Asians, like in major categories. And, but like, I was, I was just flabbergasted. I was like, first of all, I can't even pick any of these things because I don't identify with any of these things at all. Right, so I click white, but then I wrote in my skin is white, if that's what you mean, dot, 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 yeah. in, my, in, the, in the comment section. <laughs> and then at the end, I click other, and I put Cuban American again, because that's what the fuck right. I am, I'm Cuban American. I don't know, why do we even have that category? And what, are, what, are, what government issued things are you using that quote unquote data for that isn't, doesn't have, because another thing is like this, this information can't be used against you, right? But what right. if I'm undocumented? Yes, it can be used against right. me. And yes, it will be used against me. It's a fucking lie. Yeah. And it's so interesting because they say, they say that um, a lot of those demographic uh, points are, are taken because that's how they put money in your communities and then they can like really identify what the populations are that are in certain groups. Exactly. <laughs> Which I'm like, how much money is going into your communities or whether you're going to get right. supported or not. And actually on the back end, that allows for your mayor to know exactly what color or what quote unquote race everyone or Hispanic origin, everyone in all of these different communities come from. Because for the Miami census, it was Hispanic origin was, was a category of itself. So that mm -hmm. means they understand how dense of a, of a demographic they have right. that is Hispanic or quote unquote Latino or whatever the hell, right? Yeah. So the fact that that's its own singular thing to pick, but then when you go to the race category, we have no options, I think is just wild. Yeah, it's weird. And then, Fucking like, wild. And, and there's like, and I encourage folks to definitely like look up the history of the census and like how certain term and like how that was why the term Hispanic came about. Like there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack there that I think is, is worth um, uh, looking at. But yeah, I think like even, even understanding the breakdown of the census and like we are encouraging everyone to, to um, fill it out. But I think it even like we have to teach people the why behind the action. Mm -hmm. um, and even like when we tell people vote, like yes, vote, but like for a lot of folks, there's a distrust of that system. So if what we're, if we're all collectively agreeing that yes, it is a broken system, but there is a action or there's a reason why we still have to work within the system or play within that system, then we have to be really clear about what that is. And I feel like when we're for some folks when they're trying to have that conversation it's just like oh are you gonna vote and once they hear the no they're ready to attack someone and like no one you're not gonna get me to do shit if you're gonna attack me number one okay so you gotta learn how to come to me correct number two it's like you have to really be able to understand like the the, the mission here right because then when folks are voting like if they're putting all their hope on that one vote and then they don't get what they think they're supposed to get in return for that vote then that's where the distrust continues to build so we have to actually be very very uh, intentional about how we're talking about ver voting within our communities so that it makes sense make it make sense like we were saying make it make, it make, make sense. sense so that people feel motivated to take the action um and then there's one thing i wanted to to somebody had in in the, in the comments said that we were sort of condoning looters i just want to go back and say that that's again an opportunity to change language i don't think anyone here and I, i'll speak for myself at least i'm not condoning we condoning both agree. Is a, right i mean condoning is one of the i mean stealing in itself is like that's what we don't like stealing but the government steals from its people Right, it is, it is about, so instead of saying, you guys are condoning the looters, you can say, you know, hey, you guys maybe aren't considering how the looting really affected certain people in a way that's really deep. So that I can then politely come back to you and say, no, actually, I do understand those things. However, what I am seeing is that systemically, if there weren't all these issues that, that we're fighting against in the first place, we wouldn't need to worry about these folks getting the right insurance and, and, and being afraid of the security with which they'll be able to rebuild right like they looted here in the Bronx pretty bad and like because a lot of folks like that language used felt like I was condoning you know what I did I got up my next the next day and I went to go help clean because great you know what if I'm gonna stand behind the message of what I'm saying I'm also willing to understand the layers of it and the layer is that even though I felt that way the person who shot 
I went to go help clean certainly doesn't agree with me, but I still am here for that person. So I'm showing up. So here, here I am with the broom because I understand that of how this affected you. And that's how you show up. It is a 360. It is a holistic thing. It's not just one direction that we're looking at and how we help. And it, we have to really think about that. So I just wanted to sort of address that because I know that that's something a lot of people feel like, oh, people are condoning. It's not about condoning. It's about understanding and reframing um, and then tackling from there. Yeah, it's also even having that conversation about like why it's okay, like why it's cool if Target gets looted because Target has that major insurance. You know, Target is a major corporation that can replace right. all of that stuff versus a small right. business who doesn't have that insurance and who more than likely didn't get a business loan from the bank to yeah. have built up and actually saved all of their shit to create their, their small business. One thing I am also seeing is mutual aid efforts to help rebuild black businesses and Absolutely. help rebuild small businesses. That's the things that we're not talking about when we're having these conversations is the way that the community is still showing up for these small businesses to make sure that they don't just get lost in the dust, you know? Because mm -hmm. another thing about these looting and rioting that's going on or whatever, the looting, when we're talking about why people do that, you know, that is a lot of people's only opportunity in their minds to be able to get the things that they need, that they need. their necessities. You right. know, so yeah, they do wait for that opportunity to be able to do that. And that's not, um, again, I'm not referring to every single person at all in any way, shape or form. And I'm definitely not, I want it to be very clear that protesters are a separate group of people. Exactly. There are more protesters than, and the majority of people there are right. not there to steal things. You know what I mean? Like at all. But again, when we're, when we're talking about why these circumstances create a scenario where someone feels like they can go looting, right? Right. We have to talk about People's disparity, man. The, the fact that people are in situations where they feel like that might be their only opportunity to get things that they are told they need by society. Because right. also, we have a society who has a lot of, you know, mainstream artists, a lot of politicians, a lot of, you know, socialites that tell everybody they're worthless if they don't have money. And they're worthless if they don't have money. Exactly. That's so what, I was what do you think that's going to be doing to an that. uneducated populace? You taught us to lose. You taught us. You taught us that before the importance of a life comes the importance of our materialism oh, and how we can flex. You taught us that. Like you know what I mean. And whether or not we perpetuated that is a whole other conversation. But we perpetuated it because we were trying to make sure that we had the status as well. Everybody wants to be down. Everybody wants the status. We were following orders. Okay. So this idea that it's innate and it's because I thought because I've seen a lot of it. No, it's so mono. It's so mono que se ponen whatever calling black people monkeys and trying to compare us to animals in the way that you were conditioned. To, to believe, because that's another thing, a huge point. I can't believe I haven't even said this already. The whole problem uh, in this situation is that people have been trained to be desensitized to the oppression of black lives. Amen. People have been desensitized the black to the, the oppression of, of black lives, of black business, of black people. We can see it over and over again. Why? Because our media teaches it. Because when we watch award Oscar winning movies, they're all about fucking slavery and watching us get whipped. Um, you know what I mean? Like, because when we, you know, we're very selective about the lenses. When we wanted to lenses gangster rap, we wanted to make sure everybody knew they were criminals and didn't listen to the nuances of the, the lyrics. Right? Like, there's just so many ways that they control the narrative and we get spoon fed it and we don't know how to spit it back in their face. But they sure as hell know how to take what we try to give them and inform them with and spit it back in our faces. Oh, really quick. I think that that's something even like in dynamics of argument. Like, I think we've all learned the way that people are supposed to argue, mm -hmm. the way we argue with one another is to throw other things in each other's face. Like, I find that a lot of the time when I'm trying to argue, with someone or uh, about why this is a, a relevant movement that everyone should be, you know, in tandem with. Right. They, people just love to bring up past and just right. be like, oh, well, they didn't stand up for me when this happened. And they were never with me when I was bullied when I was younger by black people. And, uh, you know, cause like a lot of Cubans who grew up here, of course, grew up in the poorer parts of Miami, which of course are mostly comprised of people of color, you know? So mm -hmm. when you have a white Cuban, who is poor and in these neighborhoods, of course, they're probably getting bullied right. <laughs> because they're not of the same color. You know what I mean? And right. because these little kids' experience outside of what they're experiencing right now has been racism. Right. You know? So if they see someone who's not like them in their space, they're going to be racist. That is just like, it's the way that it works. Of course, it's not the same. 
caliber right. of racism in any way because right. there's totally different ways that systems actually oppress people versus not. Right. But it exists. And a huge line that we're not ever addressing is that, yes, racial disparities, but the, the real big thing here is rich versus poor, is yes. money versus not having yes. money. You know, yeah. because there's so many different subcategories in the poverty level yeah. that keep all of us from fighting each other's fight right. with each other, you know, right. that keep us feeling like each of our individual fights are different from w the, the entire fight, which is freedom and liberation yeah. from these, these oppressive systems. And that, that letting place. one win brings yours back is another thing we're taught. Like, uh, oh, well, exactly. I'm, I'm competition. so I can't put too much attention Carson. to that because you know, we need to focus on this. And it's just kind of like, well, no, 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 no. There's the inter, again, intersections. That's a big word. Listen, use the, for all of you guys, download that vocabulary, intersection, intersection. There's so many, because more than two things can be true. So another great word is duality. It can both be true. You know what I mean? That like- And untrue. Yeah, and, and, and you know, it can both be true. Like, for example, this call out culture we have, which is important. I think it's super important, but I think that once the people are called out, we haven't done a good job of making sure what the next steps are outside Amen. of canceling. How do we go beyond canceling to actually make those martyrs, right? When they're being martyrs, the people who get like torn down, which for uh, most time for good reason, but like, let's put the education behind that outside of just teaching cancel. It's, it's call it's, in versus call. You out. have to call, yeah, yeah, call in versus calling out because there's going to be, listen, and we've like, you know, I know I've existed in spaces where hell, like I've been put in corners and I'm seeing some sort of injustice and I'm maybe like, maybe it's related to work and I'm like, fuck, if I speak out, I'm going to fuck up this whole project or I'm going to bring some bad blood. And then like, that might be real. And the person who's in the room who I'm not supporting in the moment is going to remember that five years, might fast forward five years, they might be in this moment and be like, yeah, Julissa, you're supporting black lives and you're blah, 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 blah. But I remember the time when you did X, Y, Z, and then boom, that shit's gonna come out. And then what do I have to do, right? I have to be able to go back. And if I don't already know how I was wrong, I gotta go back and be able to say, all right, shit, well, they called me out. How can I get called out? I'm a black woman, this is my fight too. What did I do wrong, right? And I need to be able to really sit with that information and, and then move forward and be able, like a real apology, and the reason we don't always accept celebrity apologies is because they, you can tell they haven't done that step before coming back out and saying something. But we've all been part of groups where like one person has spoken up and been like, hey, I had a bad experience in this space and no one here advocated for me. You know what I mean? And then like, and it's like, so it feels fake to see them as advocates now well make sure you've done the work so that when those people speak up because it's valid it's valid to be called out even when if you did something years ago that you can actually come back and speak for the work that you've done yeah i am imperfect i am yeah. imperfect i'm not even gonna front and say that i am i got called out plenty of times growing up you, you know what i mean especially once i left miami miami mm -hmm. is a disgustingly anti-black like society, like especially in the like upper echelon that I grew up in. I grew up in private school. I went to Carrollton, you know what I mean? Like it's mostly white Cubans, mostly white or or, or um, upper class Hispanics, you know what I mean? It is what it, or Latinos is what it was, you know? And I was not, I was very much lower middle class and I right. was on scholarship and I had, you know, a lot of financial aid and that was the reason I was able to be there because I was very intelligent. Right. But, that was why I was there, was because of my intelligence. I could not have been there socioeconomically, you know what I mean? And right. I felt that difference. I felt that stark contrast of, of my existence versus the, the complete disconnection from the rest of the world that these people had, you know what I mean? And, and the anti-blackness that was just so, it was like water. It was like, like having three black girls in the grade was like, what? Like, they're right. clearly not here because they can afford it. You know what I mean? Like, that was just understood. You know what I mean? In, yeah. in conversation. Like, yeah. that was that was how disgusting things were, things are and were, you know what I mean? And that's why I think right now it's just such a beautiful moment is because we're reckoning with a lot of that stuff right yes. now. I'm having those conversations even further with people who, like, will come out of their way to try to, you know, tell me something about what, what I'm supporting, what I'm not supporting right now. You know right. what I mean? is it's causing those conversations. And granted, I learned a lot when I was younger, you know what right. I mean? When I was 16, I stepped out of Miami and I was put in a girl group even, like Norm Normani, who was black, you know? Her yes. being around her and feeling her experience through the through what we went through, like yes. it was a, her experience was very different from the rest of our experience. And 100% due to the fact that she was black, you know? Right. And, and that was constantly confronted and constantly part of, part of the conversation, you know what I mean? Yes. 
And it, it's unfortunate because in a lot of ways, we didn't understand that struggle. In a lot of ways, we couldn't, we couldn't um, even like make space for that at the time, you know what I mean? Because yeah. of what we were going through, you know? And, and what we were going through on a grander level, industry-wise, by the people who were in control of what we were doing, you know what I'm yes. saying? And you I think that that's important to call that out so, like, to I that layer of control. It attached to her experience because it was its own unique experience within our experience. So, yeah. like, that's a whole other thing. It's like, there's so many layers to this shit, bro. Yeah. And it's so important, like, and I'm so glad that you brought that up, um, you know, because I've heard, I've, you know, I've heard those stories. And I think, like, even a moment like this, like, you acknowledging it in a moment like this is so big. And that's just where we have to be. Like, we just know the truth. Let's just speak to it. Speak a truth to power. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just, we, we kind of just have to have these uncomfortable moments and these conversations. Look, I had a moment with a friend of mine where he was like, wow, look at this old video I dug up from when I was in high school. And I was, like, reenacting a scene that he had wrote. And, like, it was my favorite scene but I was like trying to be Asian and I had my fingers like this in the video and so like I you know and it was me literally being like oh my god I miss your scene so much and I'm reenacting it right so it wasn't a demeaning act but I still like he said it to me and he was like oh haha it looks so funny and I was like that's not funny and I owe you an apology like it's not funny and I owe you an apology and like and and it's listen and that's my brother and it's fine and like it wasn't an experience that hurt him in any way but I have to be able to call out those things because I need him to understand that that's unacceptable behavior from anyone else as well you know so like sometimes owning our own shit is so that we are leading by example that's because the most important part examples we have. accountability is is it yeah. right? like we really gotta have that conversation I think is like we must take accountability, even when it's uncomfortable, even when we don't want to admit to ourselves that we're not the best people, right? you know? When we don't want, like that's the main thing is not wanting to have to feel like a part of our character is someone who's careless or someone who's, thought, right. who's not thoughtful or someone who, who intentionally tries to harm people. I know that for the majority of us, of course the intention is not harm, but the intention versus the impact is a huge part of this conversation. Just because your intention was good does not mean that you had a positive impact on the person you were engaging with. And just because you didn't do that does not make you a bad person. But right. you you choosing to run away from accountability is what makes you a bad person. Does that make right. sense? It's like right. you choosing to run away from that and, and not allowing yourself to be held accountable and, right. and reinforcing this this idea that like I'm just I'm not I'm not racist. I just, I'm not racist. It's like, you might not want to be racist. You might not agree with those ideals, but what you said was, and what you were doing was. Right. So acknowledging that and being like, you know what? I, I didn't realize before, but this behavior is racist. And I apologize for that. And right. I'm going to do better moving forward. That's all we can do. You know right. what I mean? Like, unfortunately, that's all we can do. But the more we run away from it and the more we refuse to identify with it, that's where we get lost in the sauce and all the chaos starts to come across is because, oh, I, I rhymed without even trying. But, but that's when it happens is because we, we're, so, we're so much more concerned with how we look. Right. And, and how people perceive us. Right. Than, than, what, than the pain that we're causing by, right. by not taking that accountability. Yeah. You know, and that at the end of the day is what all Black people are asking for right now is a fucking accountability. Yep. Is for us to see where we need to grow to take responsibility for the parts of that are not their responsibility anymore. Right. And so let them fucking live their fucking lives. That's yep. it. That's all that's being asked right now is that we stop policing communities that we don't understand. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and then educate yourself and then understand, and understand the issues that you're having with that community and being able to call yourself out and to take ownership where ownership is due. Um, and also, I think, and, and in that understanding that you don't get to um, control how people respond. You're Ooh. only you're only in control are, of what you can say. To forgive you. So if I, you know what I mean, if I say something and I, you know, apologize, however I apologize, and I take ownership for some people, the hurt might be deeper than what you can offer in the moment, and that's that. But you have to take the ownership, and then it's your job to lead by example and live your life by those words, as opposed to only being performative for the one moment and that's where it comes through and that's where it follows through so there are people who are never going to forgive you for the shit that you did in the way that you were inappropriate and it's not their job to have to forgive you because that has everything to do with them and nothing to do with you what you have to do is actually take action to the lessons that you learn that Amen. is the ownership that you have and to make do. sure that you never affect anyone like that ever again 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Never make it so that there's another person walking this earth who is so pissed at you that they cannot forgive that hurt because you were just so damn ignorant. You know what I mean? It is that ownership and it's understanding that. Let me say something. That lesson I learned, let me tell you, it, it's so interesting because I didn't, I didn't even get to be called out. I just had to see it. I had to be, I had to have learned everything I've learned from the age of, I think I was uh, 16, like from 16 to now a 29 year old woman. And I had to see it with my 29 year old woman eyes and not the eyes of the 16 year old who was just doing it because they missed their friend and they wanted to perform the favorite part of the clip of the art that their friend made that they appreciated. Even if there's innocence in that, there's problem in that. And, the, and my mm. eyes need to see it for what it is. So I encourage folks that as things start coming up, when you get called out, look at it with your fresh eyes and your new knowledge, because your gut's going to respond with the defense of like, oh, oh, but this is what I meant. That's going to come up and that's okay that that comes up. But make sure that you handle that on your own and that you're not using that to counter the person who is trying to teach you in the moment. Make sure that you are listening in that moment um, and really looking at it with fresh eyes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Well, Oof. I feel like we've covered a you lot. You said it all. De todo. De todo. I yes. feel like we have to have a reunion like you and I. We, we should. Must, we, we should. Can, I thought we could talk forever, bitch. Right. <laughs> Listen, I hear Miami's more opened up than New York. I'm tempted. <laughs> Bang, <laughs> I'm tempted. I have family. I have a cousin down there, so I'm low key tempted to just be like, well, come let me through. Speak. If you come through, please let me know. I would love to see you. I would absolutely, absolutely love to hang out in person absolutely. and build and plot and undo together. Yes, as undo together. And thanks for everyone who was listening. Like, we were real passionate and stuff. But these are the conversations that we need to be having. Do not be afraid to have these conversations. If you guys ever have questions on how to handle this, there's several resources. Um, I, on my platform, my podcast, at Lady Su Bronche, um, we are trying to really put these conversations forward and, and have moments like these. So if you're really interested in, like, continuing these conversations or listening in um, in these conversations, Follow, follow your, your, you know, your black content creators. We are. Amen. We're, follow we're Julissa. Lives. Yeah. And we're talking about our lives. Like really what we're putting forth is a truth experience, not just the cool movie that someone's going to write. That's, uh, you know, based on a true story, hear the true story, like really show up for, for the moments that people are creating to, to share with you the information you need to, to get woke for lack of a better word. So. And hold us accountable, you know, and hold us accountable to what we're sharing and, and how they're problematic. It's an ongoing dialogue for us all. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes. All right. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Julissa. Thank, Thank you. you for coming on and for taking the time today. I really appreciate you and just yes. like your perspective and your voice. You're just so brilliant. Thank you. So. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the space. I really appreciate it.